Longtime companion. It could mean your soulmate, the person you've shared your life with for decades, or it could just mean your faithful dog. It's the term that newspapers used in the 1980s to describe the partners of people who died of AIDS. And it's the title of one of the first films to talk about the epidemic and the pain of seeing all your friends and loved ones die. I watched the film last night and have only just now stopped crying and hugging my partner long enough to make this video. So let's grab some tissues and take a look. The movie, which turns 25 this year, starts in the early 1980s and follows a circle of friends as HIV takes its toll. Gay life in 1981 actually looks like a lot of fun. Drinking and hookups, intensely short short shorts that I really wish would come back into fashion, and a dance that I consider to be one of the most erotic moments ever committed to film. There's also a scene-stealing mustache and possibly the world's gayest beach lounging. So, okay, we've got the companions aspect covered, but we've only just gotten started on the long time component. First come the ominous foreshadowings of what's coming that make you want to shout at the screen, you guys, watch out! Have you seen the paper? Did you see the paper? Have you heard this? Before the disease even had a name, it was just some weird thing that you read about in the newspaper and probably didn't need to worry about. Let's not even talk about it. That doesn't last long. I have pneumonia. It only takes the movie a couple of minutes to go from I have pneumonia to this. I'm afraid to even go to the dentist by myself, and here's the character John dying alone in a ventilator before some of his friends even have a chance to visit him in the hospital. Other characters are a little more fortunate in that they are surrounded by friends and family. Hello, handsome man. Hi. While they were shooting this movie on Fire Island, hairstylist Joe Del Corso started crying. One of the actors asked him what was wrong, and he pointed to a nearby house. I used to have a share there with nine guys, he said. I'm the only one left. I figure I've got about six months. He died about a year after the film came out. Everyone on this movie understood firsthand what the suffering was like. I feel like something is stalking me. That's Fuzzy and Willie. They're HIV negative, but they're suffering too. Imagine if suddenly all of your friends were dying and you had no idea why. All you know is that the guy you had drinks with the other day is now going through this. And everyone's doing their best to help, but it's the mid 80s and there's really nothing they can provide to stop the disease. It's okay to cry. It's all right. So what can they provide? Well, how about a little long-time companionship? Of course, that doesn't even begin to describe what these characters do for each other. For example, David has for years been keeping his partner Sean alive and vital. Finally, it's clear that Sean's time is just about up, and David, who has devoted years to keeping Sean alive, now has to help him let go. It's all a worry. <gasps> let go. I can't even talk about this scene without needing a hug. And I wonder, if my partner of 15 years was in this condition, would I be able to hold his hand and encourage him to die? I honestly don't know. And even though the worst of the epidemic is behind us, when I watch this movie, I feel like I know these guys. They watch TV together, they get brunch, they have excellent beards. This is 1989, but it's also kind of my life today, just with less wood paneling. I hang out with my friends at the Eagle. I can't imagine if I had to visit them in hospitals or help them roll over or stand there helplessly while they waited to die. What makes this movie so devastating, and the reason I had to hug James afterwards, is that it's not just the people with HIV who are suffering. It's their family and their friends, the people they've spent their whole lives with. It's their partners, the people reduced to the term longtime companion, which, after the scene in which David says goodbye to Sean, is a devastating joke. You want it to say that Sean is survived by his longtime companion, David Elders? Why don't they say love that's me? He didn't use to say anything. The guys in the movie have barely any access to treatment, so all they can provide is comfort and company, each other. And eventually, the illness takes that away too, leaving the survivors with just memories. Longtime Companion ends with another heartbreaking scene, a short fantasy sequence where the epidemic just never happened and everyone who died is back. We'll go down to the 
This scene wrecked me. We don't have a cure yet, but HIV is manageable. You won't have to watch your friends die like the guys in Longtime Companion do. But seeing this movie makes you reflect on the people in your life, which is why you absolutely have to see it, even though it will destroy you. I have friends I see at bars, we chat on Facebook, sometimes I'll meet up with some guys to play Mario Kart. I take it for granted that we can always grab a drink next week, or the week after, or next month. I'd consider them companions, some of them long time. But having watched this movie, the words long-time companion don't just mean some euphemism. They mean wondering, if it was 1981 and there was some new epidemic in the paper, who are the people in my life I'd do anything to protect? It means taking stock of the people I'd visit in the hospital, or bathe, or help die. It means asking what it would be like to bear the sudden loss of all those people. And it means, hopefully, never finding out. Thanks to everyone who recommended I talk about this film. If there's a movie you'd like me to cover, you can tweet at me, at Matt Baum, or leave a comment on this video. Also, thanks to Mark Finley, who cheered me up afterwards by rushing over an emergency package of Busby Berkeley films. You can check out my podcast, The Sewers of Paris, for revealing stories about the entertainment that changed the lives of gay men. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have some choreography to practice. Life's not as bad as it may seem If you open your eyes to what's in front